A vital part of studying medicine is learning anatomy. And to understand anatomy, we first have to be able to appreciate the anatomical positions and the planes, as these are the standardised concepts that we need to use to describe anatomical structures. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. OK, let's make a start. The anatomical position is the standard reference position for the body. And essentially, it involves the person standing upright with their feet together, their arms by their side, and their palms turned to face forwards. By always having this consistent body position, it means that we always have a permanent reference upon which to describe anatomical locations and orientations. So for example, if you had a laceration on the lateral part of the forearm, but what was deemed as lateral was continually changing, then it would be a nightmare trying to discuss a case, let alone make a referral or even plan a surgery. The next thing to be aware of is the anatomical planes of the body. There are three major planes that pass through the body when it's in its anatomical position, which we've just discussed. These are the sagittal plane, the coronal plane, and the transverse plane, which can also be referred to as the horizontal or the axial plane. The sagittal plane and the coronal plane are two vertical planes which can be remembered by the sutures of the skull, which share their name. The coronal plane is a vertical plane that divides the anatomical body into an anterior part and a posterior part. The sagittal plane is also a vertical plane, but it's at 90 degrees to the coronal plane and goes straight down the middle of the body and essentially divides the body into a left part and a right part. Now, in the case of a sagittal line that exactly divides the body into equal left and right parts, we refer to this as the median sagittal plane. And lastly, we have the horizontal plane, which we can also refer to as the axial or the transverse plane. And you can imagine the horizontal plane by picturing a magician sawing their assistant in half. And the horizontal plane would be the line that that saw would create as it divided the body. So essentially, it divides the body into a top part and a bottom part, or more accurately, a superior part and an inferior part. But we'll be coming back to this terminology later on in this video. So how do we describe the location of anatomical structures? Well, there are three pairs of terms that we use to describe structures relative to other structures, or in relation to the body as a whole. These include anterior and posterior, or ventral and dorsal, which are in reference to the coronal plane. Anterior or ventral describes things that are in front of something else, or in relation to the body, when it's in the anatomical position. And in the case of posterior or dorsal, this refers to structures which are located behind another structure or in reference to the back of the body. So for example, the nose would be an anterior structure of the body in general and also would be anterior relative to the angle of the jaw which itself would be posterior or dorsal relative to the nose. Or, as another example, the elbow would be on the posterior or dorsal aspect of the arm. The next terms we have, which are in reference to the median sagittal plane, are medial and lateral. Medial refers to something that is closer to the median sagittal plane, whereas lateral refers to something being further away from this midline. For example, the right eye is medial to the right ear, which is in turn more lateral whereas the head of the radius and the wrist is lateral to the head of the ulna when the arm is in the standard anatomical position. 
Then we have the terms superior and inferior, which are in reference to the horizontal plane, which as we know we also refer to as the axial or the transverse plane, when it's passed through the whole or a part of the body, with superior being higher than the plane and inferior being below the plane. So for example, the shoulder joint is superior, so higher up, compared to the wrist. And the ankle is inferior, or below in reference to the plane, compared to the knee joint. Some other important terminology include proximal and distal, which describe the location of a structure in reference to its origin. So for example, in the arm, the elbow is proximal, so closer to the origin of the arm, when compared to the more distally located wrist. And it also applies to branches of a system. So for example, the arterial system, where the common iliac artery in the lower abdomen is described as being more proximal when compared to the superficial femoral artery in the leg, which we know is located more distally. Then we have the terms cranial and caudal, which refers to something being closer to the head in the case of cranial, and closer to the tail in the case of caudal. Now these can be used instead of superior and inferior, but it's essentially describing the same thing. Another term we have, which is mainly used when looking at structures of the head, is the term rostral, and it's used in particular reference to the nose. So for example, the frontal lobe of the brain is rostral to the occipital lobe. The final terms that we need to know help us describe the depth of a structure relative to the surface of the body. And these terms are superficial and deep. Superficial is the term we use to describe when something is close to the surface, whereas deep refers to when a structure is located further away from that same surface. For example, the heart would be described as being deep in relation to the more superficially located ribcage, which is obviously closer to the body's surface. Okay, so those are the key anatomical terms you need to know to help you learn anatomy. And they are really, really important in everyday medical life. Whether you're assessing a patient, describing radiological images, or even carrying out a surgery. So hopefully that was useful, and you should now be really confident in understanding and using these basic, but essential terms. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content. Or if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.